Hello, wine drinking people. <clears throat> it's Tuesday, April 27th, and we've got another killer week of wine events for you this week. But first, what I had to drink last night. This is going to be a big one since it's Tuesday. We got Saturday Brown Bag, which I only got to taste a few wines at Brown Bag this Saturday. There was another Peter Michael sighting. We hadn't had one in a while, the 1996 Peter Michael Chardonnay Bel Mon Placier, uh, which this was very good. Didn't have the typical movie popcorn butter that you usually get out of Peter Michael, but uh, really nice wine. Still had plenty of fruit, nice minerality, and uh, good acidity for a 1996. Thank you, Ray Glenn. As I mentioned, I didn't get to taste most of the wines at Brown Bag. I had to leave early to set up for a private tasting. Saturday night, we did an event with 20, featuring 20 vintages of Tenuto Ornelaya with the winemaker Axel Heinz at a private individual's home. Uh, this event was uh, outstanding, and uh, I have to say that it was a unique opportunity to taste through almost the entire history of this property, which has only been done two other times in the United States of America. The last time it was done was at the Great Wine Seminar three years ago. Um, so the, we started out with the young wines from the estate. We had the 1985, the 88, the 1990, 91, and 92. And of that first flight, the 1990 was definitely the star. This is a blockbuster wine, still young, still has plenty of structure, great freshness, uh, very, very nice. The 1988 was a step behind that, uh, just not quite as concentrated, not quite as rich, uh, but still had good freshness, still very much alive. And then for me, the 85. 85 was an outstanding vintage in Tuscany, but this was the first year that this vineyard bared fruit. And the 85 vintage throughout Tuscany is still very well regarded. The 1991 and 1992, two lesser vintages, but still showing the pedigree of this property and their dedication to producing outstanding wines, even in difficult vintages, as these wines were still very much alive and pleasant. Uh, the next flight we had 1993 through 1997. This was a great flight. The 93 and 94, the two lesser in this group. Uh, 95 was an outstanding vintage in Tuscany and uh, a lot of the wine still very much alive. Like this one, very fresh, uh, but kind of overshadowed by the last wine in this flight, the 1997, which was an outstanding vintage in Tuscany. Many people uh, uh, still have a lot of 97s in their cellars and these wines are still very much alive. We're doing a 97 tasting in two weeks on the 8th of May here in the store. We still have a few seats left for that. And uh, the 1996 I didn't mention, but it was very nice. One of the things that happened in 97 was this was the first year that they produced a second wine, La Sierra Nova, at the Ornelia property. So this definitely made the quality of Ornelia in 97, I think, take a, huge, a couple of big steps up. Uh, and if they had done this in 95, I think the wine would have been uh, much, much better. Uh, so the La Sierra Nova appeared in 1997. The next flight, 1998 through 2002. Well, 1998 was picked as the number one wine in the top 100 and the wine spectator, and this wine definitely lived up to its billing. It'll be interesting to compare it 97 to 98 as the years go on, as these were two spectacular wines. 97 kind of edged it out tonight. And then 1999, another very good vintage. Uh, this wine, still very big, a lovely chocolatey note to it. Uh, still nice, firm tannins. Uh, of all the wines that we had, of the young wines, the 2000 was probably the best to drink today. And then 2001, another blockbuster vintage. This wine still has got years to go in your cellar. And then 2002, a light, difficult vintage, uh, but again, showing the pedigree of this great property. The last flight, the 2003 to th through 2007. Uh, 2003 was one of the oddest wines on the table. It was definitely marked by that hot vintage. It definitely smelled different from all the other wines. Uh, still very nice, but not very typical of what you get from Ornelia. 2004, an outstanding vintage in Tuscany. This wine's still a baby, but has all the right stuff, and in years to come, it is going to be fantastic. Uh, 2006, another blockbuster vintage. Uh, that's the vintage we currently have in the store. I've been touting this wine for quite some time ever since it was released. Uh, this wine, again, still a baby, but uh, is going to be fantastic 10, 20 years from now. 2005, kind of a victim of being sandwiched in between two great vintages, 04 and 06, uh, but a very nice wine. And then the 2007, looks like we have another blockbuster year uh, for Ornelia. Next up, Sunday. Well, Sunday was a relaxing day. Uh, just at the beach with the kids frolicking out in the waves. And then on to uh, the bowling alley, which uh, Tony, she reigned supreme again. Even though she wasn't on her game, 
the Canadian always wins at the bowling alley. Sunday night, we had a little uh, reprieve of the Rapini with the Barada, which was very nice, with the Duck Confit actually added into it. And the rest of the Montalcino wines from Friday night, still drinking beautiful 48 hours after they were open. Stellar. And then uh, the wine of the night, the 2000 Marcarini Barolo Brunate. The 2000 Barolos are drinking beautiful. We had this wine with a little sea bass and risotto. Thank you for Chef uh, Ari Roloff for preparing that. And uh, this wine still had lovely exotic spices, beautiful floral notes, soft tannins, a zesty acidity, and lovely red cherry fruit. And I think we got one bottle of that left in the store. 2000 vintage wines from the Piedmont drinking really nice right now. Monday in the store, uh, just one supplier, uh, but a good one. You know, as long as we have uh, a good stuff, I don't mind if it's a short day. And we had Pierre Antoine, Antoine Rovani in, a uh, famous uh, wine critic, used to be wine merchant, and uh, now is uh, the president of Remoisonnet. Very nice wines, these 2007s, very impressive, very well built. The Polini Montreché, outstanding, even though not cheap. For the price, it's going to be hard to find wines that are better than these in Burgundy. That's just the thing. You can get cheap wines in Burgundy, but usually they're not outstanding. These wines were outstanding. A nice treat to get to try the Le Perrier. Definitely a few steps up. This wine's still a baby. I would have liked to have tried it after it's been open a few days. And then the Le Mans Rocher. It's not rare people bring by Le Mans Rocher for me to taste. So this one, I didn't spit any of this out. We drank all the Le Mans Rocher, which was beautiful from Mawassonet. Not a bad price for Le, Le, Le Mans Rocher, three ninety five. Check out the review on the rest of the Reds there. The Gevry Chambertin, the Von Ramenet, and the Chappelle Chambert Chambertin. Some of the best 2007 Reds that I've had. Okay, last night we had one of my favorite dishes for dinner, tacos. Just kidding. Well, you know, the kids love tacos, so I've got to, you know... <clears throat> I got to concede to the little ones every now and again. Okay, but we did have wine, and uh, we hadn't had a Bruno Colon sighting in a few days, so the Santanay 2005 I thought would be a nice choice for tacos. And uh, this wine was beautiful. I don't have a lot of really nice drinkable burgundies in the store. 05 is an outstanding vintage. This wine still has some legs, but lovely, bright uh, red cherry fruit, raspberry strawberry, a little bit of smoke and mint in the nose of this, uh, really smooth and silky on the tongue and wonderful freshness. Uh, even with a little bit of spice uh, to, the, to the food, this wine stood up very nice to it. And as you know, one bottle is not near enough for me. So we did have a little bit of 2002 uh, Marc Colin Delager, Chasson Montrachet Le Chaume, which the 2002 whites are drinking beautiful right now. This wine had this lovely kind of creme brulee, vanilla cream note to the nose, a lovely ripe apple fruit to it, uh, and some lovely minerality, and still pretty good freshness. I can't wait to try the rest of this bottle tonight. Well, what are we drinking tonight? Well, we've got a big week this week. We've got Jed Steel tomorrow night at Cafe Max. We've got Oliver Sombrero Saucy Chef on Thursday night. We've got the Great Wine Seminar Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then Saturday night, we've got our doubleheader, which is what this email is about today, Chiachi Piccolomini. We have the owner, Paolo Bianchini, coming into the store Saturday night for a tasting of his 2004 vintage Brunello, the 2004 Pian Rosso. This is uh, from the prized vineyard in the Castello Novo della Abet Zone of Montalcino. And uh, we will be trying the 2004 Reserva Brunello, the first sighting of this wine in the marketplace, along with the little Super Tusk the Montecuco, the entire lineup from Chiachi Piccolomini with the owner, Paolo Bianchini, uh, in the store this Saturday night. Check it out on today's email for Tuesday morning. This is your host, Andrew Lampasone from the Wine Watch, saying, remember, always drink the good stuff first.